Hi, welcome back. In this video, I will be discussing the part of my project where I automated a web table in the Tools QA website. I'll explain the test case code at a basic level, run a number of test cases, and review the test results. In the next video, I will do a deep dive into the code. Here's the web page that I automated. Here's the web table, and it has seven columns and three rows of data. My first test case will verify that the row for Alden has the correct information listed under each of the five data columns. These steps will all pass, but the remaining steps will fail. As I've always mentioned in all my previous videos, test cases are only good if they are able to properly report failures. Let's look at the test case code. Here's the test case. These are the steps that will all pass. The web table verify cell data method verifies correct data is displayed in a specified cell of a web table. The first two parameters tells the method which row to verify. This will be set to the column name, and this will be set to the value to search for under the column name. The first row found with the value under the column name is the row to verify. The last two parameters tells the method what is to be verified. At this point, after utilizing the first two parameters, the method knows which row to verify. In that row, the method looks under the column named that is set to this parameter and verifies the value there equals this parameter. This is how the first verification is to be read. In the first name column, find the row with Alden in it. Then in the same row, in the last name column, verify it is Contrail. I placed a commented line here to help you remember what the parameters are used for. The next few lines will verify the remaining data columns for Alden. And the remaining lines will report failures. As explained in past videos, I usually prefix an X character in the expected results data to help me remember where failures are expected to happen when I am testing my code. This line will report that the age value was incorrect. But what if there are defects where column names are not displayed correctly? If the column first name is not found, then the age cannot be verified. The test is blocked. That scenario is tested with this line of code. The same goes if age column is not displayed. And what if the person whose age is to be verified is not found in the table? This line covers it. We always need to write and test code to handle the unexpected. This requires thinking outside the box when automating. I would even create a data-driven test, as demonstrated in a previous video of mine, in order to test more than just the possible issues covered in this test case. Now let's run this test case. The test case started. And now the test case completed. Here again is an HTML report that always gets generated during a test run and can also be viewed in my QA web portal. And here's the log file version of the test results containing the exact same test results plus more. It's easier to have all the test steps line up for viewing when using the log report and it's easier to resize all the windows to view them all at the same time. Take a look at these past steps and compare them to what is shown in the web page. It should be very easy to understand the test results. Pause the video to look at the results some more, and then continue when you are ready to move on to the next section of results. The remaining test steps failed. They are the steps where I forced a failure by adding an X character to the value of various method arguments to make sure my code handles unexpected issues. This one failed because the age did not match. These two failed because the column names were not found. I plan to update the code to report better messages when these two types of errors occur. I updated the code to handle these two unexpected issues at the last minute before making this video, and it's best to always do a thorough regression test when implementing new code which, even for small code changes like this, can take a lot of time. So that is why, at least for now, they are displayed as such. And this one failed because the person whose age was to be verified was not located. 
If you want to review this some more, please pause now and then hit play when you are ready to continue. I'm going to show you another test case with some additional code I automated to test the web table. In the web table that was tested, every person listed had a unique name. So it was easy to find the row containing a person's information just by searching for their first name. But what if more than one person had the same first name? A social security number would be unique to use, but no such data exists in this table. So what could be done instead is to search for a row that contains both a first name and last name match. To test my code for this scenario, I first need to use the edit feature to modify a person's first name to be the same as another name that already exists. I will automate this feature too. And this will also demonstrate how actions on web elements inside of a web table can be done with automation. Let me show you that part now, so it will be easier to understand when I explain the code. Alden already exists as a first name, so I will modify another row to also have Alden listed. My code will search for the row where the first name Kiera and last name Gentry is located in. Then it will click the pencil icon in that row. A pop method I created for this registration form will modify Kiera's first name to Alden. This code works just like the pop method I created and demoed in my past video for the practice forms page. It will edit most of the other fields too. Not that it has to, but it buys us more time so that you can see it in action. Otherwise, during the test execution, the registration form page disappears with a blink of an eye. Here is the updated record, where now two people with the first name Alden exist. Every time the web page is refreshed, or if I navigate away and back to the page, the record in the table reverts back to the default values. But if the edit feature were to be tested in a professional project, it would be best practice to include code containing logic to make sure the replacement values to type in are not the same as the original values. I might make a best practice video about this in the future. Let me show you the test case code now. Here's the test case. Web table action click is the method that will click the pencil icon. It uses a hash map, just like the pop and verify methods did in my previous videos. Column name one is set to search in the column named first name. And in that column, it is looking for column data one, the data which is Kiera. Column name two is set to search in the column named last name. And in that column, it is looking for column data two data, which is Gentry. When the method finds a single row that has these first and last names found in the action column for that row, the edit icon will be clicked. The icon looks like a pencil, but once the cursor hovers over it, the tooltip displays the text edit. And my naming convention is to name web elements as closely as to the text a user sees on the web page next to that web element. The pencil click opens the registration form screen. In that screen, my pop method is called to edit the first name as Alden. It modifies the other fields too, except for the last name. For fields that accept alpha characters, they will be edited with a prefix of new to make it easier for me to see that the new values were modified in the web table. For the numeric only fields, alpha characters were not allowed. So I place comments to let me know what the original values were, and then just use a different numeric value. After the fields are modified, the web table will be set for us to see if the automation code can locate the correct row to verify when two people have the same first names but different last names. I use method overloading so I can again call the method named web table verify cell data, which is the same method name that was called in the previous test case. The only difference is that now an additional column name and value is passed in so that the correct row will be verified. These are the two additional arguments passed in. These lines verify that the row where Alden Gentry is located will contain the correct values for each column. And to the automation engineer, it helps validate that the code was able to find the correct row based on two matching column values. This first section of code will result in past steps. And to make sure it can report failures when the actual column values do not match the expected, these verifications are used. And this last line of code will verify the previous one and only original Alden did not get his age changed. Now it's time to run the test case. So let me start. The test started.
the rows being edited, the test finished. Let me resize the windows so I can see the test results better. Now we can see all the results. Here's the step that clicked the Edit Pencil icon. It states the row number and the data used to determine what row number the icon was clicked in. These are the steps executed for entering and submitting new values in the registration form. The remaining steps are verification steps. The first group of steps verify that the data in the Alden Gentry row were correct. The next group are the same verifications but show up as failures because I modified the expected result in my code to make sure that they would report failures properly. And just to make sure the original one and only Alden did not get modified, here is a verification for his age. If you want to take your time to review the test results, please pause the video now and hit play when you are ready to continue. What I like about this test case is that not only was I able to show you more of my coding style and code for additional types of web elements, but I was able to show you more of what a test case does, which is to test a feature. This test validated that the edit feature in the registration form could be used to change records in a web table. Please note that in this video I did not cover all the ways to test to make sure the automation code was reliable. A lot more testing was required. But I just wanted to show you the most important examples in order to give you a good idea how important it is to test your code thoroughly. In the next video, I will do a deep dive into the code used to create these and other web table methods. The link to it can be found in the description under this video. My email address is there too, so please email me if you have any questions. Thank you.